Okay. Welcome again. Thank you all for coming. This is the third lecture in the series about uh, the life of my Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhaktivedanta Tripurari Swami. And uh, this time I'm gonna uh, go from 1984 until 1999. Um, 1984 was when my Guru Maharaj first um, read uh, a book by Srila Srila Maharaj. And um, I mentioned that at the, at the end of the last talk, but I will begin with that this time also, because it's um, um, there are many, many connections to uh, that will come from this. So in 1984, Guru Maharaj was uh, traveling around the United States uh, in a van with a couple of brahmacharis and going around from temple to temple and distributing books in the different cities they were visiting. And, uh, and these were very uh, troubled times in ISKCON uh, after Prabhupada's uh, disappearance. So um, Guru Maharaj noticed in, in, in every place that they came to that um, it seemed like um, the kirtan and the class was just kind of going through the motions, but then um, what people were kind of really about at the time was to, to like discuss afterwards all the problems that were going on in the mission. And because uh, there were problems with the uh, with the leaders of the mission who had uh, taken over the uh, the role of, of gurus after Prabhupada left his body. And um, so Guru Maharaj was advising um, the temple presidents in, in all the temples and all the ISKCON temples to, um, to get together and, and um, kind of share their concerns and, uh, and kind of form a body together to kind of approach the GBC and, and tell them that they're, they're not feeling nourished. And, um, and then as these travels went on, when he came to Chicago that year, uh, someone, a devotee that he, he knew from before, uh, who used to ask philosophical questions of him, uh, handed him a copy of Sri Guru and His Grace by Sri Lashira Maharaj and asked Guru Maharaj if, if he could explain what is wrong with this book, since th this book was forbidden to read. Um, so Guru Maharaj uh, didn't have anything, like he, he wasn't really, he, he wasn't very much aware of like, he, of course, he, he had received the, the instruction from Prabhupada that, that um, the ISKCON leaders could go to uh, take guidance from Srila Srila Maharaj uh, on philosophy. Uh, but Guru Maharaj had, had personally, personally not done that. And um, so he had just uh, heard what others had said about him. And um, he didn't believe, uh, like, some of the kind of rumors that Srila Srila Maharaj was, uh, had the ambition to uh, take over ISKCON. He, he just couldn't believe that, but he, but he was thinking maybe there is like something that, it's, that is not correct uh, in the philosophy he was teaching or um, maybe some small point or something, he said. So, so he read the book to kind of try to find whatever it, it could be that... Um, that was supposed to be wrong about the book, um, but he said that like reading the book was, um, uh, he, he has given uh, different uh, analogies to, to like the feeling of reading, reading the book. Um, but one, 
one way that I heard the other day uh, um, in, in a lecture was how Guru Maharaj said that after Prabhupada uh, left the world, it was it was like um, kind of like the darkness after the sun sets, and then like the ISKCON leaders trying to kind of um, uh, like trying to kind of keep some keep some some light was was to like try to like hold up a light bulb and he said it but they, the way they were trying to shed light was like trying to hold this light bulb but tripping on the cord and getting electrocuted whereas reading this book by Srila Sridharaj was like um was like having another sun like rising again in comparison and um, like also like another analogy he has given is is to to speak of Srila Sridharaj as as the moon. So after the the sun, uh, like after the sun of Prabhupada is setting, the moon of Srila Sridharaj is rising. So, so different ways to speak about it. But um, Guru Maharaj was very struck, um, and. He felt that he felt that this is the same substance that that Srila Prabhupada was speaking. He said that no one can affect me like this. No one has ever affected me like this other than Prabhupada. So, so they must be of like of the same caliber. Um, Guru Maharaj has also mentioned at other times that like the only one he has seen who was the, the only uh, the only sadhu that he has met who was of the caliber of Prabhupada was Srila Srila Maharaj. Um, uh, so he, he has said things like that they were two leaves from the same tree mm. so one time I asked Guru Maharaj about this like how because he um, kind of the way he was struck by by reading the book and uh, also to, to like the point of crying and uh, that he could see that it, that it is like Prabhupada coming again that that there is like um, uh, that in a sense there is like no difference between them. So I asked Guru Maharaj about that because that's a very deep insight because externally. Srila Prabhupada and, and Srila Sridhamarj, they seem extremely different. They have such uh, different personalities, different ways of speaking. Um, they look different. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so I, I, I asked Guru Maharaj because I was thinking that if Guru Maharaj has, had such um, uh, deep vision that he could see like the, um, the essential unity between Prabhupada and Srila Sridhar Maharaj then, then did he really need Sadhu Sangha because someone who can see that deeply that they, they wouldn't they, they could, they could um, probably be able to um, like draw like all the teachings from, from within and um, and Guru Maharaj replied that um, Narottam Das Thakur in his song uh, J Anilo Premadhana is like lamenting after all the the, the sadhus in his life uh, have passed away, and he said he's he's beating his head against a rock, uh, in uh, just like in in the madness of separation from them. So Guru Maharaj said that that if if someone such as Narottam Das Thakur is feeling that way, then <laughs> then certainly um, then cer certainly Guru, Mar Guru, Mar Guru Maharaj will uh, feel feel the need for Sadhu Sangha. Um, so having read uh, the book, Guru Maharaj um, went to visit. Uh, his god brothers who had left Iskon already to uh, to um, uh, 
to publish the books of Srila Shida Maharaj. So they had, they had printed this book. So Guru Maharaj went to see them in, um, in San Jose, California. And, and he asked them uh, what they think he should do. And, and their response was that uh, they thought that, that it's only a question of time until until people, people start realizing that Srila Shri Maharaj is not bad or anything. Uh, like they will soon start, start to, to appreciate him like as soon as they just find out about his teachings, like just, just like Guru Maharaj had done. Um, so they, they advised Guru Maharaj to, to, to continue to, to travel around to the temples like, uh, like he had been doing and, and just kind of try to find opportunities to speak about Srila Shida Maharaj. Um, so, uh, so Guru Maharaj did that. And, um, but then kind of the word got out that he was doing that. Um, and it reached, um, it reached the leaders uh, who were not um, very happy about it. And, and Guru Maharaj had to uh, yes, like the, the rule in ISKCON at that time was that if, uh, if you want to, uh, well, basically, <laughs> there was no question of uh, facilitating anyone who wanted to hear from Srila Shida Maharaj, like you had, if, if you, you cannot remain in ISKCON if you want to hear from Srila Shida Maharaj, that was the rule. So, so Guru Maharaj uh, was on his, his way to uh, to leave ISKCON when he when he passed through uh, San Francisco and uh, and visited a, a devotee who had a temple there a Treya Rishi and and told him that he he was about to leave ISKCON because of um, not being able to to follow Sri Lashuda Maharaj within ISKCON and a Treya Rishi asked Guru Maharaj to, to stay in his temple. And he said, it's, uh, like, I'm, I'm fine with you um, following Srila Shida Maharaj, so you, so you can stay here and, and preach here and um, distribute books and uh, uh, train up devotees and things. So Guru Maharaj took that offer. Um, but soon, like, the word again reached uh, the leaders of the organization and, and he had to leave from there as well. So, so then he went again to his god brothers in, in San Jose. Uh, so this was in uh, around uh, October of 1984. And uh, some of the, the, uh, the devotees were going to go to um, to Navadweep to see Srila Shida Maharaj that year. But there was, there was kind of a, a momentum to, to try to kind of get something, something started, some kind of uh, ashram in, uh, in, in the US for people who wanted to, uh, to like leave, leave ISKCON and follow Srila Shida Maharaj. So, so Guru Maharaj stayed uh, in California. And um, he, he was given uh, audio recordings of Srila Shida Maharaj's lectures. He said that there were 200 lectures recorded and he, he had copies of all of them and was like listening to them while he was doing the work of starting up that uh, center. And um, let's see. Oh yes, and uh, I wanted to also mention a nice point Guru Maharaj has made that um, when when he when he finally uh, uh, left Iskon, he had a conversation with a god brother still in Iskon, um, who told who who kind of was trying to uh, uh, persuade him to stay in Iskon. 
and he said uh, that Srila Sridharmaraj, like he may he may be a like a like a nice a nice and advanced devotee, but he he's very old, and uh, so he he may he may pass away at, at any moment. And right now you have uh, a totally uh, perfect reputation in ISKCON. So you can go anywhere and, and do like, uh, do any service, any, and any preaching. But if you go to, to Srila Sridharmaraj, then, then you will lose your, your position in ISKCON. And, and you, may, you may also not have Srila Sridharmaraj. Um, so 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 it's more it's more safe if you stay if you stay in iskon and guru maharaj said that he replied that he would rather uh, he would rather be sitting on the plane on the way to india and get the news while he's still in the air on the way to india that shrila shudamaraj has passed away um than um, than to stay for one more uh, than to stay like another minute like in the association of people who think like you. So it, it shows his his like his sincerity that uh, he wouldn't you know choose comfort over uh, sadhu sangha. So but in. Uh, for Gora Purnim of 1985, so, so in March there, uh, February, March, he said, he, he went for the first time to, to Navadvip to, uh, with some other devotees to see Srila Srila Maharaj. And, um, uh, let's see, and he also went back um, again, in uh, in May of the same year, to, to stay to stay a little, little uh, a little longer by himself for for a little over a month, and um, and he was studying the the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu there, um, reading uh, the the English translation of Bhakti Ridai Bon Maharaj and, and and asking questions to to, to Srila Shri Maharaj about uh, points in the book and uh, it was also that year I think that he he asked if he can if he could hear if he could if Srila Shri Maharaj could could chant um, the Diksha mantras and and the Sanyas mantra into his ear because he had received the mantras from Prabhupada but not heard them directly in the ear. He had received them on paper. So, so Srila Shida Maharaj um, uh, uh, did that and, um, and also gave him some, some extra, extra mantras, for example, the Radha Gayatri. And, um, and also some devotees wanted their their names uh, changed when they came to Srila Sridharmaraj for shelter, like they wanted some kind of sign that they, they had a connection with him. So, so sometimes like he would add something to their name or adjust their name or, or, or things like that. So, uh, but, but Guru Maharaj was, was, was happy with it to, to keep, to keep his name, but on a parikram, there, because Guru Maharaj was simply Triparari Swami. Sometimes, uh, like often, Prabhupada did like that. That is one system of naming sannyasis: is that you simply keep their their initiated name, and then you add Swami at the end. Uh, so he was Triparari Das, so he became Triparari Swami. There is another system where you you change the name, and you also add a title before, like bhakti something and then the, a new name so like bhakti um bhakti pranay padmanabha maharaj for example um so there was there was a parikram a navadvipdam parikram and there were followers of srila shudamaraj uh, 
out on, on this parikram and um, one time they were uh, sitting down at, at some holy place to give kata and um, there was uh, there was one uh, who was kind of the the host so he was he was presenting the speakers so he, he had the sannyasis, the sannyasis sitting in uh, sitting like in a line next to each other so he was presenting them and he said here is uh, bhakti gaurava narashinga maharaj bhakti bhavan vishnu maharaj and then when he came to guru maharaj he said uh, bhakti and then he, he didn't know <laughs> because guru maharaj actually didn't have a title like that so at that uh, at that point narashinga maharaj just said just said bhakti vedanta <laughs> So in that way, Guru Maharaj uh, got this title, Bhaktivedanta Tripurari. So it was just a spontaneous um, titling on the spot. But very fitting, of course, for, for Guru Maharaj, like we mentioned uh, um, in, the, in, the pre uh, pre in the last time uh, about how extremely well-read Guru Maharaj is in uh, in in the Shastra and was already at that time also that, that he had read uh, all of Prabhupada's books many times over and also in a very organic way. Uh, for example, uh, studying in the style where you, uh, uh, if you are going to look up one verse, then you read 10 verses before and then the verse and then 10 verses after and you on the way, if any verse is quoted in, in the commentary, then you go to that verse, you read 10 verses before, 10 verses after, and then you go back, go back again. And then, so in this way, you, you get a very organic um, uh, like view overview of the whole uh, body of scriptures. So Bhaktivedanta is, um, like you could say that it was simply like uh, a revelation of a quality of Guru Maharaj rather than like putting on some title. It was, um, it's just, uh, it's kind of self-evident. Um, this is, by the way, also how Srila Prabhupada got the title Bhaktivedanta. Uh, it, it was just by a god brother who affectionately wanted to give him that title. It was not that he was uh, given that title at, at his initiation or anything. So, so Srila Sh Shida Maharaj um, uh, encouraged Guru Maharaj to, to go on preaching. Uh, Guru Maharaj asked for some, uh, for, for some seva. And Srila Shida Maharaj just said that like, Prabhupada has already like, fully engaged you in seva. And, and um, you should just just continue uh, your your preaching work and and uh, um, like have your have your own mission and and I will I will help you in the background. And uh, he he said to simply to kind of get something started, just just initiate some people. Like you don't have to like worry so much about their qualification. Just initiate. Um, a group of people so that you can get some 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 help and assistance in in getting getting something started and you know then you know maybe maybe some people will leave after a while or or, or so but there is no loss uh, there is never any loss on this path so um i have i have met uh um, I, I was trying to email him to get some anecdotes out of him, but uh, I haven't gotten a response this week. I was a little, little late, but um, the very first uh, disciple of Guru Maharaj, uh, Vaishnavananda, uh, was in, the, in this very first group of devotees to be initiated. So... So Guru Maharaj established his, his mission um, legally there in 1985, uh, called the Gaudiya Vaishnava Society. And um, 
so so there were so, some uh, different preachers uh, disciples of Prabhupada who are kind of in a similar situation so devotees like that they were um, they uh, Srila Sridhar Maharaj called them as a group uh, the Maha Mandala um, so it was uh, sannyasis who were uh, kind of feel, feeling feeling very close to Prabhupada, but um, uh, serving under the guidance of, of Srila Shida Maharaj uh, and having their independent missions. So they were they were kind of collaborating with one another and supporting one another. Um, also, one, one in, uh, important point is that Srila Shida Maharaj. Um, Kind of advised Guru Maharaj to read Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Krishna Sanghita uh, as a to kind of get a get a sense of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's like preaching style, like his um, openness to kind of think outside of the box for for, for preaching um, and and uh, think of Krishna consciousness in in very creative ways. Uh, so, and um, Guru Maharaj was not. Um, uh, after a while, Guru Maharaj was not the only uh, uh, acharya in his mission. He was joined by by two god brothers after some time. Um, Narashinga Maharaj and uh, and Vishnu Maharaj, and Guru Maharaj has told told the story of when Narashinga Maharaj came to to uh, to visit him when he had started his own mission, and uh, and he was kind of uh, challenging him, but in a in a friendly way. He was he was kind of doubting whether he should join uh, Shri Shri Maharaj. So he, he had said something like um, that, you know, just like um, if you're a follower of, of Radha, then you, you wouldn't want to, to, to go to, for example, um, Chandravali's uh, group and do service there. And, and Guru Maharaj responded, yes, but uh, the thing is that... Uh, that this this analogy is is not accurate because Srila Prabhupada and Srila Shri are, are in the same group, and this uh, and and other things convinced Narasimha Maharaj, and he was uh, he humbly said that um, you can consider me like a new brahmachari here in your in your uh, mission, although he he was already a, a sannyasi from, from Prabhupada just as Guru Maharaj was. So, so, so they were having the, um, the, the mission there in, in San Francisco. Uh, they were, um, oh yeah, this is also an important thing. Guru Maharaj could not continue selling the books of Prabhupada as, uh, as was his uh, main service because ISKCON would not allow him, uh, would not sell him any books since they were, um, since he was following Srila Shida Maharaj, uh, ISKCON did not want to sell him books that he could sell to other people. And so he had to, he had to come up with some, uh, some way to present, some, some like new way to present the philosophy. So, so he decided to start a magazine and so he called it Clarion Call, uh, which is um, Clarion Call is the way that Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur described uh, Krishna's flute play. So it is that that calling from calling from God. Um, so he was trying to think of whom he wanted to who he wanted his his audience to be like like what what kind of audience to focus on 
and he said at this time uh, new age was um was like just starting to become uh popular uh so, so Guru Maharaj focused his kind of niche on new age yoga ayurveda like all these things were um uh starting to become popular so, so like you if you like look at those old magazines you will see a lot of uh, advertisements for like um different like new age uh, gurus and things like this it's it's kind of funny and guru maharaj was writing most of the articles um but <laughs> but he said that he he didn't want to have his name on every article so he would uh, he would write the articles but then he would put different names on them so he would he would have different uh, alias aliases um also the um uh, the magazine was like not the main uh, like s source of income like, like the books had been uh, like instead they um they were selling t-shirts devotees were, were going out to sell t-shirts with like environmental um, like messages on them uh, and, uh, and things like that and in this way uh, they collected enough money to to open an ashram in india in 1988 called the rupanuga bhajan ashram and but also before i go on i wanted to share here uh, I asked another early disciple of Guru Maharaj named Yoga Maya uh, if she could share something from, from this time in, in San Francisco. Uh, let's see here. So I will, I will just read what she wrote. Let's see here. So she says about the, the temple in San Francisco, I just remember the San Francisco temple being a hub of energy, something always going on. Early morning program, and then the, and then the t shirt devotees would go out to their designated spots for the day. I was up on the third floor where all the clarion call stuff was done. Uh, Guru Maharaj was in his room, Narashinga Maharaj was helping with articles and layout. Sometimes everyone was so busy that Guru Maharaj would go down to the kitchen and help with the midday offering. Uh, Clarion Call, the magazine, was way before its time, really. Because nowadays there are so many mindfulness, mindfulness magazines. Guru Maharaj was trying to reach out to the new agers. Ayurveda and yoga were just getting popular and they saw a niche. They were wonderful days, no ISKCON political stuff, just the three musketeers on their own. And she's referring to Guru Maharaj, Narashinga Maharaj and Vishnu Maharaj. I had returned, uh, okay. Then she just wrote that she, she had returned to the UK because uh, she's from UK uh, when they opened the Rupa Nuga Bhajan Ashram in Brindavan. But she visited there later with her husband, Hamsa Avatar. Prabhu. So, okay. So then followed some some years. Um, after some time, uh, so like they, they kept they kept the temple in in India, but um, after some time they. Uh, closed down the ashram in uh, in San Francisco, and um, uh, Guru Maharaj for, was for some time he had an ashram in Hawaii, and uh, but also uh, like spending quite some time in Vrindavan, and other times traveling in the in the U.S. again, and um, there was. Um, Around, it must have been in 1991, Guru Maharaj was in Vrindavan, and he he said he was he was praying, 
Uh, because in 1988, Srila Maharaj passed away uh, the same year that they got the, um, the ashram in, in Vrindavan. And, and Guru Maharaj was kind of in connection to that question, question I'd asked him about Sadhu Sangha, like having that deep vision, but um, it's not something that's... Um, uh, that means that you don't want Sadhu Sangha. Um, if, uh, if it is available. And, and Guru Maharaj was, uh, said that he was, he was feeling the lack. And he said that this kind of lack is, is a good sign that it's actually, that it would be more, um, uh, it would be suspect if you don't feel the need for Sadhu Sangha. Um, it's not that if you're if you're a great devotee then you, you don't want sadhu sangha. Um, that is that is you can say in, in a sense the kind of measure of greatness is your um, feel for uh, kind of feeling the need for for sadhu sangha. So he was in Vrindavan and he and he prayed for sadhu sangha. Uh, and he he prayed specific, you know, because he, he had this. Uh, connection with Prabhupada and Srila Srila Maharaj, uh, both coming from Bhakti Siddhanta, and, he, and he, he felt um, he felt the kind of urge to to to, to like again be, be connected with something very close to that. Like he, he wanted he he was desiring to have association with another disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta, if it was possible. And that same day that he had uh, said that prayer, uh, someone came and told him that Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj was, was in Mathura visiting. And, uh, and Guru Maharaj knew him from, from the temple of Srila Shida Maharaj because he would come every year for Srila Shida Maharaj's Vyasa Puja. But uh, he was speaking in Bengali, so, so they, they had never talked, uh, uh, Guru Maharaj and him. Um, but that time in, in 1991, uh, Guru Maharaj and Narasimha Maharaj and, and Vishnu Maharaj went to went to Mathura to see Puri Maharaj, and uh, Guru Maharaj described it a little bit like when they entered the the temple there, he was staying at uh, Sri Chaitanya Gaudiya Mat, which was the temple of. Uh, um, another disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta, but who had passed away, uh, Bhakti Daita Madhava Maharaj. Uh, so Puri Maharaj was staying in a room there, and and uh, when they came in there, he was very absorbed in meditating on Narottam Das Thakur's song um, Gauranga Bolite Habe. So he he, he was he was very he was kind of he did, he did talk to them like a little bit, but he was, Guru Maharaj, as Guru Maharaj explained it, he was, he was not there to entertain them. Uh, so, so like they introduced themselves to him. Um, they mentioned that they, they were disciples of um, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and, uh, and also followers of Srila Srila Maharaj. And as soon as, as Puri Maharaj heard the name of Sridhar Maharaj, then his his face just uh, uh, lit up. Guru Maharaj said, like he, um, and he and he, he put up his hands. Um, he he always had a very uh, like strong um, strong feeling for for Shri Lashida Maharaj. Um, so, so so they they had some kind of small. Uh, small conversation there, but 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 Puri Maharaj was just kind of floating back into his meditation on on this song of Narottam Das Thakur, and and was kind of barely aware that that they were they were present. Um, but they but they they kept coming back, and they brought other people, and um, and also um, Guru Maharaj brought one. One devotee who, who became a disciple of Puri Maharaj and who started to, to print the books of, of Puri Maharaj. 
and uh, and then he he um, um, his his mission kind of he was already ninety two years old at that time, but he hadn't really had a, a mission until then. But it uh, it kind of came out of that. Um, uh, and Guru Maharaj was not part of uh, of that formal mission, just as he was also not part of the formal mission of, of Srila Shida Maharaj, just going to hear from Srila Shida Maharaj and being connected to him. So he had a kind of similar relationship with uh, Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, going there to, to listen and um, uh, you know, asking questions, um, writing Vyasa Puja offerings every year and so on. And um, in uh, 1992, Guru Maharaj was uh, traveling again in the US and he was going through the state of Oregon, which is um, uh, the state above California. And he passed through uh, the, t the city of uh, Eugene, where Agni Dev Prabhu was living at that time, and he had a Govindas restaurant there. And uh, so, so Guru Maharaj visited him, and, and Agni Dev arranged a program. And uh, so, so devotees were coming there, and Guru Maharaj was preaching. And then when, when he was about to leave, then Agni Dev said, like, please don't leave. Like, we want you to stay here in, <laughs> with us, in Eugene. So Agni Dev, Agni Dev arranged that, um, uh, that the Guru Maharaj could open a temple in, in Eugene. And uh, so there he, he uh, established a temple that um, was there until 1999. And, and there is, is where Guru Maharaj started to, uh, to kind of really uh, write books. So he had been doing the, the Clarion Call magazine. Um, and at some point they kind of collected the, uh, the, the best kind, kind of, uh, I guess you could say that, like the best articles from the magazines and put together in one book. And that was kind of like a bridge book, you can say, um, because that was like the first book of Guru Maharaj, but it was uh, a collect collection of articles. Um, but then in 1992, um, uh, he, uh, he got a disciple named Vrindaranya who became his uh, editor. Um, that she, she found kind of so, some of his, because he had been like working on a book, but not, not like really put it together. And, and she found a manuscript and started to make it into a book. And that's kind of how, how his um, book publishing started. Um, so then uh, that book was uh, Rasa, Love Relationships in Transcendence that came out in like 93, I think. And then in 96 came Tattva Sandarbha uh, of Jiva Goswami. And as Guru Maharaj, he, he shared a little bit on Namarasa's podcast um, uh, last Sunday, like yeah, a couple of weeks ago, that, that he met Satyan Das in 1993, who is now the, um, like the, the kind of teacher of at Jiva Institute, uh, who is uh, like who are translating all the the Sandarbhas of Jiva Goswami. So, but he uh, this Satya Narayan Das was in uh, in Iskon in in 1993, and Guru Maharaj met him there and was hearing Tattva Sandarbha lectures from him. And he told he told uh, Satya Narayan that you should you should. Um, you should pub you should uh, put this into a book, um, but Satya Narayan was not like really uh, into that at the moment. So, so Guru Maharaj uh, <laughs> like um, kind of took it on himself that like this these teachings have to become available. So so he wrote his commentary on on the Tattva Sandarbha, or it's it's kind of like a 
yeah, it's like a, it's it's not not like this, not the type of commentary where you have a verse and then commentary and then a verse and commentary. It's it's like kind of like, you can say kind of like Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, how the way Prabhupada turned that into nectar of devotion, Guru Maharaj did, did something similar with Tattva Sandarbha. Um, uh, putting it into kind of like just like one uh, flowing text and uh, also that year in 1993 in Vrindavan uh, Guru Maharaj um, first uh, started to kind of look into manuscripts of Gopal Tapani Upanishad which he he later published a commentary on uh, much later in, in like 2005 but he was kind of working on it like a little bit here and there um also earlier like like you can see in the i think 96 there come out like a a, a book of uh, commentaries on the different diksha mantras and in there uh, is, is guru maharaj's description of the gopal mantra which is of course uh, drawn from uh, the gopal tapani upanishad um Let's see. And so, yeah. Uh, so in '96, Tattva Sandarbha came out, and um, um, and and though though uh, being a follower of, of Puri Maharaj at this time, or or you could say like a follower of Prabhupada and Sridhar Maharaj, but also taking inspiration from from Puri Maharaj. Um, he was also um, uh, like looking for service opportunities to serve other uh, Vaishnavas. So for example, he funded the printing of uh, Srila Narayan Maharaj's first book in, in English, uh, which was um, a translation of uh, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu which is Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur's um, kind of uh, shorter, ver short version of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Uh, and also in uh, that year in 96, um, invited uh, Srila Narayan Maharaj to, um, to, to give classes at his temple in, in Oregon. So, so he was, uh, he sometimes mentioned this, that like no, no Iskand temple would, would invite him. So, so they were like the only temple that invited Narayan Maharaj on his first world tour. Um, so then in 1997, he, he published Joy of Self, which is uh, a short introductory book, introductory book. Um, it's it's it, uh, like it is introductory, but it's actually it's very very deep. So it's it's you can say it's a very very deep introduction. If if someone is introduced like that, they get a, a very um, uh, how do you say thorough <laughs> thorough and, and deep introduction. Um, Guru Maharaj sometimes says like that that he always wanted to have, like his his idea like when he was like starting his own mission was that he wants wanted to have a a reading congregation more than he wanted to have like a uh, like a physical mission uh, with like many temples and things. It's more like he wants he wants it to be that people are following um, like that they are interested in, like in a, in a way of thinking rather than than like a, a formal um, institution to to join. Um, so there, so there are very deep chapters in uh, in Joy of Self on um, uh, Guru Tattva, uh, Sadhana, um, some uh, like one chapter on some Bandagyan, one chapter on Abhideya, one chapter on Prayojan. So um, uh, he calls some Bandagyan their conceptual orientation. So give, giving like. Um, very like helpful ways to, to uh, translation and ways to, to think of of the Gaudiya Vaishnava concepts. Then in uh, 1998, 
uh, he published uh, Aesthetic Vedanta. And in that book, he's kind of doing, he kind of uh, perfected uh, the kind of first book, which was Rasa, um, which like he's not printing anymore because Aesthetic Vedanta is kind of like the perfected, it's like, the, it's like Rasa 2.0, you can say. Uh, it's, a, it's a translation of um, the five uh, most central chapters of the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam. So it's the five chapters of the Rasa Lila, also called the Rasa Panchadhyaya, um, with very uh, insightful um, uh, like introduction and, and also a kind of afterward like he he gives first an introduction then the five chapters and then afterwards it's it's kind of baked all baked into a very um wholesome uh presentation um also that same year uh 1998 he published a small booklet called shri guru parampara which is um very valuable it was it's a response to um there is a book by shukavak uh, prabhu about bhaktivinoda thakur's life uh it's um it contains a translation of bhaktivinoda thakur's kind of own like autobiography uh, uh, that he wrote um so you get a very um very personal, very, um, I say, very open, uh, open-hearted uh, biography of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. But anyway, in, in this book, Shukavak is um, was making some points uh, that Guru Maharaj did not agree with. He said he said that, for for example, that Bhakti Siddhanta did not teach Raganuga Bhakti. So he kind of said that in our lineage, Raganuga Bhakti stopped with. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and from then on, it's it's Vaidhi Bhakti. So Guru Maharaj wrote this uh, booklet, Shri Guru Parampara, uh, clarifying those uh, top, like topics of Raganuga Bhakti, um, very beautifully. And um, so, the, but then in in nineteen ninety nine, many things changed. Um, so, so here is is where I will end because here, 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 like you can you can clearly see like a a new uh, a new face in Guru Maharaj's life. He has started to work on on his Bhagavad Gita commentary. But uh, that year, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj left this world, and uh, Guru Maharaj and Narasimha Maharaj decided to um, to not have a mission together anymore. Uh, no bad feelings, just that they were kind of uh, wanting to preach in, in rather different ways. And, uh, and, and also the, this temple in, in Eugene, where he had been since 1992, um, he felt that it was time to kind of uh, move on from there. He wanted to, to do something different, um, be more uh secluded and and focus uh more fully on, on his writing he was he was actually thinking thinking to stop initiating at this time um and, and simply serve the vaishnava commu community by by writing books like he was thinking that others could initiate and he, and he can just be there to kind of nourish the the community with philosophy um Okay, so, so there I will end the presentation for today. Um, if anyone has uh, any other like anecdotes or anything, uh, questions or clarifications that they wanna share, uh, you're very welcome. Otherwise, we can end here. And thank you all very much. Okay, here is something from Annapurna.
Do you want to translate? Oh. Thank you. Okay, so, oh yeah, sorry, so, sorry, I have to repeat the question because uh, on, on Facebook uh, they won't be able to hear, and on YouTube. Um, okay, so the question is, um, what was the book that Guru Maharaj first read from Srila Shida Maharaj that, that made him, uh, that made a big imprint uh, on his heart and that made him leave the formal mission of ISKCON and um, start his own mission and uh, and so on. Um, so that was Shri Guru and His Grace is the name of the book. Um, and uh, what it was in the book uh, was that um, it was very much uh, uh, relative to those times in ISKCON because um the um, like uh, uh, iskon members had gone to shrila shidamaraj to ask about all the problems in iskon and Sh shrila shidamaraj gave his answers to those problems and and guru maharaj was uh, uh, at this time like i said traveling all around us and hearing about all these problems from all the temple presidents all around uh, the united states and then he was given this book of Shila Shila Maharaj and, and his, his kind of ta task was to find out what was wrong with the book, but he couldn't find anything wrong with the book. Instead, um, the book answered all the problems um, that, were, that were going on in, this, in, the, in the Vaishnava society there at, at the moment. So it was extremely... Um, uh, you know, like uh, striking, um, and uh, there is also there is a nice, there is an, an especially nice chapter. I mean, especially relevant to to this point. There is a chapter called um, "Society Consciousness versus Krishna Consciousness," where, where uh, there is a devotee. Um, who actually later on he has passed away now, but he he was living in in um, in Guru Maharaj's ashram in Costa Rica later on, named uh, Shatananda. Uh, he was asking Srila Shri Maharaj about uh, this topic, and Srila Shri Maharaj was saying that that just like if you have like um, like a political uh, conviction so you join like a political party but then the political party changes um but you still have have the have your firm conviction that you had when you joined so, so you kind of have to um you have to like leave for the sake of your values um like th there's like no point for you to stay stay in a place if you came to that place with a certain conviction uh, and you came to that place to facilitate that conviction, but the but this uh, but these like circumstances change, then then you have to leave to kind of uh, find other like-minded people again. Um, so so that was the 
uh, I mean, of course, uh, the, uh, the book was was trying to solve the problems in ISKCON, not you know <laughs> trying to get people to leave ISKCON, but um, and also Gurumaraj didn't want to leave ISKCON. He was he 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 was you know uh, first and foremost um, looking to. Um, try to inspire the kind of solution side, but of course, but, but then like, if there is no, if, if the solution is not possible, you know, then you have to kind of, um, you know, go somewhere else and set a good example instead. Uh, and then, you know, maybe others will follow your example later. So I hope that helps Annapurna. And uh, then Sarada has, a comment here. Could you just clarify the last thing that you said about the reason why Guru Maharaj felt uh, it was best to move away from Eugene? <sighs> yeah, uh, like the way I've, I've heard it from Agnidev Prabhu was that it was just becoming clear. <laughs> it, um, it was like they were having like this like regular uh, Kind of Sunday feasts, but people were just coming for for the prashadam and and were not interested in interested in hearing the philosophy. Um, um, there was he he mentioned like one one instance where so, some people were like waiting outside, and and Agni Dev like noticed them and um, and and, the, <laughs> and kind of popped out his head or something and. And they asked him if if he could tell them like if the class was over so that they, they could come in and uh, uh, have prashadam you know like you know people people just coming for free food. Um, it was it was this kind of uh, signs that um, that Guru Maharaj felt that he that he, <laughs> he had like another. Uh, like another per like another purpose and a another service to like do to the Vaishnava community than than to try to kind of preach and bring in uh, new people. So okay. Thank you all very much again. Vancha kalpa tarubhyas cha kripa sindhubhya evacha patitanam pavane bio vaishnavi bio namonama anantakoti vaishnavi vrinda ki jai gaura prema nande haribo. Sri Manjana Nanda Prabhu ki jai. Jai.